Okay, here we go. Section 12.2 and 12.3. Um, hopefully this video resolution will be a little bit better. I think I maybe fix that problem. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is surface area of prisms uh, and cylinders. That's what we'll talk about first. Then we'll look at pyramids and cones. Okay. So once again, like we talked in section one, we've got a prism right here. Um, it's got two polygonal bases. So the bases are polygons. In this case, we've got a hexagonal prism. Okay. Uh, and, and that's pretty much all that squares there for it. Okay, um, let's talk about nets real quick. Um, sketch the prism, imagine unfolding it to make a net. Okay, well, if we wanted to find the surface area of a prism, what we really got is a, a rectangular prism. What we really got is this three-dimensional object here that's got six surfaces. And if we could like kind of unfold it almost like a cardboard box, we'd see that we've got a couple big rectangles and a couple small rectangles and the edges. It would end up looking flat like this. Okay, and that helps us imagine what we're actually doing when we find surface areas. So if we wanted to find the area of this thing, it would be, this is a 5 by 6 square, so this area would be 30. Um, and this area is, this is a 2 by 6 rectangle, so this would be 12. And this is a 6 by 5 square, so this would be 30. This is a 2 by 5, so this would be 10. 10 and 12, and that would be the surface area of that uh, prism. That's one way to find surface area. Now, you don't have to do it like that every time. Absolutely not. Um, you can use the formula, but that helps us give us an idea of what's going on and makes the formula actually mean something. Okay, so on um, that said, let's move on to an example uh, where we're actually going to use the formula. We don't need to draw uh, a net of this one. This, uh, sorry, this is called a net, this flat thing, uh, when we flatten it out. All right, uh, but let's find the surface area of a right pentagonal prism, which means I've got pentagons as my bases. Okay, and I want to find the surface area of that. So this little A here, and if we, I guess if we kind of look at our, maybe we can show you the formula. We've got a regular prism, that's what's happening in this example. This little a is the apothem of the base, okay? So remember a path, apothem from chapter 11. S is the side length of the base, all right? And we're just going to kind of go through all these and check them off and plug them in. And n is the number of sides, okay? And then lastly, h is the height of the prism. h is the height of the prism, all right? So, um, oh, and I'm sorry, uh, height is going to be how tall it is, so this would be, this would be h right here. Okay, so that would be the height of the prism. Sorry if you had to do some flipping. Um, our height in this one is 3 feet. Height is 3, okay. So we know H is 3. Now where should we list this here? Um, the only trick is going to be finding the apothem. So we know that H is 3. That's over here. That's the height of the prism. We know that the side length, little s, is 7.05. That's over there. Okay, 7.05. The only question is, we got to find that apothem. Okay, the apothem is the distance from the center of the polygon here on top to the edge at a right angle. So let me kind of blow up that triangle here. Okay, and I'm going to draw a right angle in. And I know that this distance is 6 feet. And I know that, um, and I know it's 7 point, this whole thing down here, this base is 7.05 feet. I'm going to round to 7 uh, because I don't feel like dealing with that decimal. So I know that this piece is 3.5 and this is little a. So to find little a, I've got to use the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus 3.5 squared equals 6 squared. Okay, and this is going to be 36. And a squared plus 3.5 squared and to do all that, this is going to require a little bit of math. You've done it a thousand times. So you end up with, excuse me, I have to get my calculator here. Uh, I didn't have this done. A good teacher would have had this done already. Um, okay, so, so I've got uh, 36 minus 3.5. Um, times 3.5, okay, and then I want to take uh, the square root of that, 
of 23.75. Sorry, you guys are probably quicker than me uh, on this one. Okay, and should get about 4.9. Okay, so A is 4.9. Okay, good. Now, that's 4.9, so then we're going to go and plug all that stuff into the equation. Okay, so surface area equals, and I'm going to run out of space, I already know it. Let's move down. Surface area equals A times S times N, so 4.9 times 7.05 times N. N, which is the number of sides, so that's 5, plus S times N, plus uh, S times N times H, which is 7.05, times N, which is 6, I'm sorry, 5, number of sides, times H, which is 3, okay? And then when you plug all that stuff in, you take 4.9 times 7.5. 5 times 5, that gives you 183.75 plus 7.05 times 15, that answer plus 183.75, and ultimately you get with the surface area, SA equals 289.5. Okay, and that's going to be square feet because it's surface area. Okay, square feet. All right, let's keep going. A cylinder is this thing. Okay, it's got uh, bases that are circles. And so finding the volume, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, finding the surface area is just a matter of finding this circle, this circle, and then um, adding that to the area of the of the kind of the thing that goes around it, the, the sides. Okay, um, so to do that, our formula we have over here, if I can get it under the camera right here, we're going to take the surface area is 2 pi r times the height plus 2 pi r squared. Okay, so let's do one. Uh, I'm going to move the camera a little bit here so I can write. Okay, so um, in this one, the diameter here I didn't give you, but the diameter is going to be 10, all right, which means that my radius is 5 units, and my formula is SA equals 2 pi RH um, plus 2 pi R squared, and uh, actually the height of this is 15, excuse me. 15, so H is 15, R is 5, I just need to plug everything in, surface area equals 2 pi times 5 plus 2 pi times 5 squared, okay, I plug all that stuff in, and then I should get, looks like 10 plus see, 50 pi, so this is going to be surface area equals 60 pi, 10 pi plus uh, 50 pi is 60 pi, okay? Uh, so that'll get us started on that one, all right. Um, the last, so, so cylinders are pretty straightforward, I think. Um, this last one, uh, the radius is going to be, I can't remember here, the radius is 7, so this length here is 7, and then the length or the height, really, for us, right? The height is um, 18. Okay, so that would be, once again, plug and chug into that formula. Do that one on your own. We're definitely going to do this hexagonal prism in class. That one's going to be a tricky one. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you guys see what I'm doing here? Oops. Okay. The hexagonal prism one we're going to do in class um, because it is kind of a tricky one. And then the surface area, the triangular prism, I'm going to get you started on that one. Uh, and I'd like you to do that one on your own. But what we've got is a triangular prism. So the surface area equals 2 times the base, the area of the base, plus the perimeter times uh, the height, which is little h. Sorry, you guys have got this formula, though. Um, 
Okay, so if I want to find big B, well, that's going to be fun. Um, and big B is going to be the area of the base. To know the area of the base, I need to know the area of this triangle here in blue. This is the base. So I need to know the height of the triangle, right? This whole thing is 4, uh, so I need the height of the triangle. Uh, and to figure that out, I know that this edge of the triangle is 4. I'm looking for H. This segment right here is 2, so H squared plus 2 squared equals 4 squared, the hypotenuse squared. Okay, so this is going to be 8 minus 4. Um, so, so H is going to equal 2. Convenient. Alright, so H is 2. So big B, we're all doing scratch work here, big B is going to be 1 half the base of this triangle, which is 4, times the height, which is 2. So the base, or the area of the base, interestingly enough, is 4. And uh, I just realized that that is all, just looking at this, I just realized that that is all wrong. 4 squared is 16, uh, minus 4 is the square root of, the height is the square root of 12. Uh, oh gosh, I am so sorry about this, guys. The height is the square root of 12, which means that this is 1 half the square root of 12 times 2, which is, I'm just going to be, actually, I'm sorry, the, all right. Scratch this. This is a terrible video. I'm ashamed. 1 half the square root of 12, that's my height, times the base, which is 4, which is going to be b is 2 square root of 12. And I'm going to stop this disaster soon, I promise. Um, so surface area equals 2 times the base, which is 2 square root of 12, plus the perimeter. Uh, the perimeter of the base, well, the perimeter base is 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is 12 times the height, which is 11. Okay, and this is something we can just plug into our calculator. Surface area equals 4 times the square root of 12 times the square root of 12 um, plus 12 times 11. And that should give you 145.9. Point 0.9, and that's meters squared. I apologize if that was a disaster. Uh, please, if you have questions, make sure you ask about that one in class. Um, this work here is correct. Square root of 12 is what it should be. Um, so everything else is right. I apologize that it took me a long time to get there. Okay, and that's it for this part of surface area. We'll hit the next part in the next video. Okay.